Greetings, my name is Chris aka The Philosopher's Games or TPH Games as my little games channel here is called and today I want to look into the new Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree gameplay reveal trailer. Shadow of the Earth Tree is the DLC slash expansion for Elden Ring and it will come out at the 21st of June 2024. It will cost round about 40 dollars or euros which is quite expensive for an expansion. However, it was in development for two years and rumors are that it was originally planned to be two DLC slash expansions just put now in one similar with the old Hunters for Bloodborne. As a result we can expect it to be absolutely massive. I think so far no expansion in FromSoft's history for the Souls games was in development this long so I expect a very huge expansion here and very curious what the scope at the end will be. But let us look into the trailer. Small spoiler warning because I will reference some late game Elden Ring stuff here and there. At the beginning of the trailer we see a person standing in the Mokwin Palace slash Mokwin Dynasty Mausoleum close to the cocoon of the Empyrean side of Grace. And it was for a long time speculated that this cocoon might be the entrance to the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC because on the conceptual art that was first published we see Mikala, the brother of Melania, sitting on a spectral steed, maybe it is even our spectral steed Torrent, and riding through this shadow realm. And due to this we knew that Mikala is in the DLC and as a result the connection was drawn that we have to maybe go to Mikala, who is in this cocoon in Mokwin Palace and enter the DLC from there, which is confirmed in this trailer because there we can hear the line set also by a female voice, maybe the person standing in Mokwin Palace at the beginning of the trailer. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. Interestingly, in the next section of the trail that leads to this great establishing shot, we see the player now riding through these lands that look very familiar to what we already saw on the concept art. Speaking of the establishing shot, the question comes of course up if this place that we see here might be added to the existing base game map. So is this a physical location there that you can just ride to or is it some kind of parallel dimension? I personally would assume it is potentially the latter. So it is called the Shadow Realm. As a result, it's maybe some kind of obscure version of reality where things are twisted. Think of, I don't know, the mirror universe in Star Trek. Something like that. I could imagine that they go for this approach. Another argument that can be made is just the visual communication of this image. If you look at the Earth tree, it looks like a veil is emanating from it and maybe obscuring this part of reality, trying to maybe hide it, which is fitting to what we learn in the trailer. That this is kind of a forgotten and forsaken place, the shadow realm as it's called. And we know that a veil is something that covers something, that obscures something. So that would be kind of fitting from this perspective as well. Further, I also try to kind of recreate this image in the base game, so find a perspective where this shot would be kind of possible if it would be part of the base game using a mod called ER Practice Tool where you can deactivate gravity. And I have to admit it was very difficult to find a place. Maybe at the very far west it would kind of work. But a huge problem is of course that the mountains of the giants and also the forge of the giants are very close to the earth tree and you don't see these mountain parts there here on this image in the background. Also Lyondale is very close of course or around the earth tree itself and you also don't see this. Later in the trailer we have another shot that seems to be quite close to the burned down earth tree and we have no indications there to see something um, of Lyondale or Atlas and so on. So from this perspective it is very likely that the Shadow Realm is really its own little dimension. Of course in theory it could also be simply a different kind of Earth Tree that we see here but it would be strange that in the base game we have the prominent Earth Tree all the time and this is called Shadow of the Earth Tree. So there's a veil and the veil casts a shadow and that is the Shadow Realm, that's how I would interpret it. It seems very strange that it would be something like the Halic Tree or so, though that 
I guess would also be possible and we also know the Halleck tree was created by Mikkele. So this might also be a, a connection to this. And at the end of the trailer we also see, I assume, Mikkele kind of healing or at least extinguishing the flames of the tree. So there could be a connection as well. Then we see multiple new, I assume, characters that might appear in the DLC. And in front of one is standing this kind of rune thing. Maybe it's an X or something like this or a banner. So that I found very unusual. Another character we see sitting in this huge hall with also some benches there, I assume. Maybe it's some kind of church. But the interior design reminded me a lot of Raya Lucaria. So maybe this is some kind of, I don't know, the Shadow Realm version of that place. Very interesting. In the next part we see the player riding towards some mysterious building in the background and he rides through what maybe is a swamp and the color scheme of the swamp has something of the death blight. Is this a death blight swamp? I hope not. That would be a terrifying thought. Another theory is that it maybe the color scheme looks a bit similar to how the earth tree looks in the shadow realm. So maybe it is related to this. And in one scene we also see a ground that seems somewhat similar to that. In this scene we also hear a male voice telling us about the Earth tree faithful and how their blood needs to be spilled in this forsaken land. So I could imagine that the Earth tree faithful are maybe faithful to the Golden Order and to the Earth tree and are not that popular in the Shadow Realm, so there might be some potential conflict. Interestingly, when the voice says Earth tree faithful, we have a cut and we see the painting of a man and a woman. The man we see later in the video, in this grotesque form where he has some kind of weird sword sticking through his head that maybe has a form of a rune or something. Or part of the Elden Ring just in shape though. It looks pretty intense and brutal to be honest, but both of them have the same brooch. And the woman next to him reminds me distantly of Fear. Maybe this is the Shadow Realm version of her or she was here once as well. Maybe the man is also close to his death and she is a death bad companion. At least the headpiece looks like that of Fear and maybe we see a bit of her hair here as well which um, is golden blonde so uh, Fear also has golden blonde hair that would be fitting at least. In the next shot we see different places, for example this one with the hanging jars which could be, um, I don't know, either some experiment on the living jars or maybe this is a place where they are created. We know that um, yeah, dead remains are stored into these jars and then due to some unknown magic they kind of become these living jars. They always have this earth tree seal on top of them so maybe this is in the Erdtree faithful place where those were created for whatever reason. So that's definitely a possibility. Then we also see this lava place and we know one of the biggest lava places in the game we know of is Volcano Manor for sure. So maybe that's also somehow related. I find interesting that this huge tube he walk, um, the player walks on has a little um, rotating thing in it. So maybe they kind of utilize the lava to do um, something with it. That's definitely a little detail I noticed. Then we see some kind of castle and in front of it we see these spiraled pillars and also maybe some of this death plight stuff that um, we talked previously about. Interestingly it could be just the light. Maybe I'm just making things up here. I also initially thought maybe this is the Shadow Realm version of Rare Locaria, but the architecture and the style of the architecture seem too different for it being Rare Locaria. As a result, I don't think that is the case here. But I think it's sure to assume that it's some kind of legacy dungeon as they called it in the base game. And we also see parts of it like crumbling, so it has some Farum Azula vibes there in the background as well. Then we also see finally a glimpse of a potential new boss. I assume it's a world boss so it's in the open world because we can see the player on the horse which is pretty rare for major Elden Ring bosses at least. I can think of two bosses which would be Radan and the fire giant where you could use your horse in combat but beyond that um, not that many and the area looks fairly open so I would assume this is just a guy that appears on the map and you can maybe uh, fight him there as a little challenge. What is interesting, it looks like a gigantic, what you call it, 
fire basket, so a lot of um, metal bars going on and inside of it it's like, I don't know, burning coals or whatever. Looks pretty cool design-wise in my opinion. Curious how fun it will be to fight this guy, because giant bosses are always a bit difficult in FromSoft games when it comes to how fun they are. So there's that. Though all things considered, I would not be surprised if it would be burning corpses inside this giant and not coals. Interestingly, this giant has a mask with horns around it and these horns kind of remind me of this concept of the omen, which we also see upon Morgot and Mok. We maybe discuss this later in the video again. Further, if we look at the area, we see again these spiraled pillars but also we see the field that is very similar to the um, beginning of the trailer and the concept art where we have these spectral gravestones, I would call them. So maybe the castle we have seen in the scene before, this area where we find the giant and so on, they are potentially all connected and we also have this NPC at the beginning standing next to some of these spiral pillars. So maybe these areas might be all connected. Then we see a new enemy. Also, I think there are some additional screenshots on the websites where we also see some additional enemies. The one we see in the trailer kind of eats the head of the player, which sounds interesting. It looks a bit alien design-wise, so very different from what we usually see in Elden Ring, I think. It gave me very, very distant Bloodborne vibes, to be honest. In the next scene, we see another enemy that looks like a potential major boss in the game. And that is an interesting one because it seems to be a mix of all kinds of things. First of all, it seems to be a grafted enemy. So it's built out of con different kind of different enemies stacked upon each other that we also see with the grafted signs and so on. And here in this case, the head is that of maybe a lion guardian or something like some of these beasts or lion-like creatures as we see with um, Sarosh, Malikes and like they mentioned um, lion guardians we find in the game and it has horns like Morgoth in the game as well so this omen concept is present here as well. If you look at the feet they look very reminiscent of the feet of Morgoth when he comes down the stair in this introduction cutscene though the hair the legs is a little bit messing, uh, missing. So there's that and then if you look at the T's of it, it has like two rows of um, T's at times. One are the T's that we also see with these Lion Guardians, but inside it looks like the T's of a misbegotten in the game. So it's a very weird mix, all things considered. So it might be very interesting to fight this boss. It also has lightning and also this, I don't know, let's call it stone blast attack that it's using. Reminds me a bit of Malikas' first phase to some degree, so very curious what the connection there might be. First I thought, oh, this enemy might be built of all kinds of defeated enemy. We defeated Morgoth, so it's a bit of Morgoth in it. We defeated um, Horalu, who killed then Sarosh, so maybe Sarosh is in it as well. But Sarosh's um, face looks very different compared to this creature's face. I double-checked that. So it seems my initial thought was definitely not right. Oh, I forgot to mention that these lion guardians in the game also have these horns, so this omen curse on them. As a result, I could imagine that exploring the nature of this omen curse further is something we might see in the lore of the DLC. I think there were also some statues somewhere in the trailer that also showed these horns here and there. And then we come to another character that also is most likely a major boss in the DLC. His name is Mesmer the Impaler according to the website and to the info screen at the end with the collector's edition because there's a figurine of him in the collector's edition. So he seems to be at least somewhat important or at least very iconic for the DLC. And he also has some dialogue and we have a cutscene. In this line he addresses his mother, whoever this might be, we don't know. And this is now the part where we can maybe speculate at least a little bit about that. There are definitely several things that are kind of noteworthy here in this context. And he also questions if somebody should be granted lordship that is so bereft of light. I don't think he means himself, but he actually means the player. So I could imagine this is kind of a mocking thing he says to the player. And he later says, those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. So he maybe thinks we are stripped of the grace of gold, so we need to meet death and we are bereft of light. 
Further in the trailer we find a lot of hints that might give us some further information and arguments and ideas for speculation. The obvious one is that he has red hair. If he is a demigod, that would mean he is most likely an offspring of Radagon. So in this case we for example have Rani, we have Melania, we have Redan, all offspring of Radagon and all have red hair. You might ask about Rani. Rani's original body is of course long dead because she had this plot where she would be killed and dies but her soul survives and then possesses the doll. However, you can find her remains, her dead body in the game. It's on the Divine Tower of Leonia. That's also where you get the curse mark of death. And on her body, on her head, you still see slivers of red hair, which makes a lot of sense because she's the daughter of Renala and Radagon. As a result, having red hair makes a lot of sense in this context. If you wonder why the doll looks different, if you find the Snow Witch set, that's the outfit she wears, you can read in its description that Rani, when she was very young, in the woods encountered an old witch and this witch became her secret mentor there. And it's also said that the doll that houses Rani's soul was modeled after her. So that is kind of the explanation why she now looks different. I could imagine also that maybe there's a connection to Melina in some way because both have this closed eye. And now we also have Mesmer also with this closed eye, which I find very um, interesting. Another obvious detail are of course the red snakes with wings coming out of his body. We know one major boss battle in the game that is also associated with a snake that would be Rykert who was devoured by the snake entity who might also be some kind of outer god or higher entity. So maybe there's a connection towards Rykert there. He also has some fire element going on to be fair so there is for sure the possibility um, of a connection here. However, we also have, when it comes to fire, we have the formless mother, I think she is called. She's also called the mother of truth. He also talks to mother, so maybe he re is referring to her. Who knows? Also an outer god that um, is associated with Mok. If that would be the case, we could make the argument that this is maybe the final form or new form of Mikala, because Mok kidnapped Mikala and try to build a new dynasty with Mikala and um, we have the cocoon of the Empyrean and the Empyreans are entities that can be moved from demi-godhood to full godhood so to say and replace Marika in this context. So there is definitely um, a possibility here. However, the spear he has looks maybe also like some form of the trident that Mok has. So that would be kind of fitting. This fire magic he's using, you could argue, maybe that is also similar to the fire magic that Mok is using. So I can definitely see a connection here. Further, if you look at the cocoon, there's an arm sticking out, the arm of Mikela, and that is a very long and slender arm with also these sharp fingernails um, on it that we also see when we look at the arm of Mesmer the Impaler. Further, also the arm sticking out of the cocoon has a ring on it, though there it is on the right hand, and Mesmer the Impaler also has a ring on his hand, which is though here on his left hand. But initially I definitely thought, okay, this is maybe definitely the new form of Mikala. Or maybe this is also the Shadow Realm version of Mikala. Because Mikala was very against the Golden Order and the Greater Will and so on. So he tried to do his own thing, even created his own tree, so to say. Here in this case, this is kind of different because he talks about the light and also the golden grace which sounds like he's maybe more in league with the golden order though he does not really use the golden order abilities to be honest but Mogot also fought for the golden order and he really doesn't look like that also though there's one detail kind of conflicting the idea that maybe Mikola changed his mind became Mesmer and is now kind of again in league with the golden order and that we find in the video description of the Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer on YouTube. I think it's also on the website. It was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. So this underlines that Mikola's idea is still to get rid of all things golden, of the golden order and the greater will. As a result, the 
theory that Mesmer is Mikola could be wrong. However, I think there is more nuance to it and the theory just needs a bit of refinement. And the idea I came up with is the concept that we find in the main game, spoiler, that Marika is Radagon. This is the truth we learn from the perfect order ending that you um, can get where you uncover this with law of regression. And I understand or interpret this detail like this, that at some point the goddess Marika became kind of sick of the Golden Order and also cast aside the part in her that liked it and it became its own entity, it became Radagon. I think this might be the exact same case here with Mikula. So Marika is a rebellious character that tried to change the world and Radagon is still the character that is faithful to the Golden Order. I could imagine that that is exactly the same with Mikkela now, reading that divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage. And that could mean that what Mikkela cast aside became its own entity, in this case Mesmer the Impaler. And this would also fit the naming convention if you want to call it like that. For example, the children of Renala and Radagon all start with an R. So we have Rykert, Radan and Rani. Then the children of Marika and Radagon. We have Melania and Mikola and now Mesma also fitting. Of course, when it comes to Marika's and Godfrey's children, we have Godwin and then Later down the line, I think Godfroy and also Godric. But there's also the twin sons of Marika and Godfrey, which is Morgoth and Mog. But of course, they were cursed by the Omen. As a result, they were officially not there. So maybe they fall out of this convention. Also, interestingly, Malikes is the half-brother of Marika. Also, both start with an M. So in conclusion, Mesma is like another aspect of Mikola and maybe both of them oppose each other in the DLC because we also see in the trailer a white glowing figure that seems to be most likely Mikola himself. So I assume both will appear here and maybe Mesma is doing quite the opposite of what Mikola is doing. So they oppose each other, which would be an interesting idea. Also wearing the ring on the wrong hand is maybe also kind of a symbol of him being like a mirrored twisted version of the actual Mikola. So that I also find an interesting thought. In addition, maybe the closed eye is also like a visual representation of a soul or an entity being split into two entities. But that is pure speculation. In the next scenes we see some fighting, some new abilities and spells and so on. And also one character casting a spell with butterflies. First I thought of maybe it being related to Melania because when she casts and runs around in the second phase she also has these butterflies. But those butterflies here look less rot like so I'm not sure. Also the explosion reminded me a bit of Elden Beast in this regard. However the character casting this is very reminiscent of Roderica, now with a blue hood, the navy hood, instead of the crimson hood, the red one that we know from the base game, and she wears it there. So this could be maybe the Shadowlands version of Roderica, or it is the real Roderica we know from the base game, who just traveled there to fulfill some purpose which we might explore in the DLC. What is strange though is that we see her casting a spell, maybe in a cutscene or something, that is something we rarely see. Or was she summoned for help in like exploring an area or in a boss battle? That would also be a possibility. But I find this kind of unusual, I have to admit. Then we also see this kicking ability, which looks pretty cool. And I think it's a very cool addition to the game. So there is that. We see the player, I assume, throwing a gigantic bomb. Reminds me a bit of Zelda in that regard. So that is also pretty cool. So pretty cool stuff coming in the battle. At the very end against uh, Mesmer the Impaler we also see the flying ability of the Crucible Knight. So you can now fully cosplay as Crucible Knight I guess with um, this ability available to you. So that is pretty cool. In addition in the following scenes we see all kinds of interesting new weapons and other elements like the rapid fire crossbow or this woman in red and she moves like a dancer with her swords and 
that looks also pretty cool. Reminds me a bit of the Dancer in Dark Souls 3. Then later we see some new enemies. For example, this, I don't know, almost hippo-like entity that just opens its mouth very wide <laughs> and running at you. And then at the beginning it also brings out a lot of spikes in an explosion kind of like thing. Pretty interesting stuff we see there. And we also see this one knight on a horse. And this is a scene where we see how close we are now to the earth tree in this shadow lens. That is quite interesting. You don't see the classic landmarks that you would expect there if it would be the physical map of the world. We discussed this at the beginning of the video. Then close to the end we get a glimpse of another boss like some skeleton entity sitting on some kind of poor horse and the head reminds me a bit of it of the Elden Beast itself but it doesn't really look like it to be honest and then it throws some kind of boomerang at you and this boomerang from its form and so on also reminds me a bit of the weapon that the orphan of Kos is using in the Bloodborne DLC. So a very interesting mix and I'm very curious what we might learn about this one in the DLC. The other scenes we already covered previously here in this video. So jumping to the very end where we see a white figure, most likely Mikola in my opinion, raising his hand and doing something to the earth tree. The top suddenly becomes a bit wide. Reminds me a bit of the Hallig tree in this regard. And we also saw that the tree was leaking something in the earlier images. So maybe Mikola repairs this tree to some degree or changes it. It's hard to tell. We can read some interesting information about this. The Land of Shadow, a place obscured by the Earth Tree where the goddess Marika first set foot. A land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. And then we can also read, Guided by Empyrean Mikala, players are beckoned to the Land of Shadow, a place obscured by the Earth Tree where the goddess Marika first set foot. In these strange new lands, players discover the dark secrets of the world as they meet others who follow in Mikola's footsteps in ulterior motives. And then further below we get the text, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree takes players beyond the lands between to explore the Land of Shadow, a completely new world from Elden Ring. Players can seamlessly travel back and forth between its vast maps interspersed with diverse situations and meticulous dungeons where menacing enemies roam. I find it very interesting that it mentioned that Marika first set foot here. So this is maybe a very ancient aspect of reality and maybe the tree we see here in this form is not the current form of the earth tree but its old form, the crucible. We can read in the crucible tree um, set description holds the power of the crucible of life, the primordial form of the earth tree. So there was like an earlier version of the Earth Tree and maybe this is kind of related uh, to this. And also the omen seems to be connected to this crucible, to this great tree as it was called before. So very interesting if we explore the beginning of the Earth Tree, the Golden Order here, maybe in this context a little bit more. And this brings us to the end of the video. If you have your own ideas and theories, feel free to post them in the description. Also, if you are still listening, maybe press the like button and subscribe would be much appreciated. Also, huge shout outs to all the people supporting me in all the different kinds of ways. It is much appreciated. And maybe check also my other content here on this channel and the Lord of the Rings channel and so on. So if you're into that, there is definitely tons of content there as well. And with this, I would say thank you for watching, have a fantastic rest of the day and see you people next time. Goodbye.